What? You don't buy that for your kids? A viewer question answered next. Hi, I'm Hope. And I'm Larry. From Under the Median. We've raised our four boys debt-free, including paying cash for our current home when our income averaged under $40,000 a year. Each week, we teach you to live with a spirit of joy and abundance on a budget. All right, so we actually had a viewer who asked us a question about specifically what we pay for for our boys and what we don't pay for for our boys. So we came up with a list and we're going to just run through them. We would love to have you interact with us in the comments. Tell us whether you do the same thing, whether you don't do what we do, um, whether you do it differently and whether you think we're right or whether you think we're wrong. So we would love to have your comments in the comment section of the video. Mm -hmm. All right, so the first thing we do not buy for our boys. We don't buy them a lot of toys. We don't. Okay, so we sort of had a rule that said, in, in and we raised them in a small home too. It was like a two bedroom bungalow. And so we sort of had boundaries where it came to toys and we said, this is like the amount of space in the house that we are willing to allow toys to sort of like, we didn't want people to walk in our house and you know, you walk in some people's houses and they're like, there's toys everywhere. And you're you, like, well, you a lot trip of over them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so we didn't want that to happen. And we said, so here's the amount of space in our life we're willing to allow for toys. And so we had a rule when they got a new toy, a new toy came in and an old toy went out and was donated or given to someone else. Um, and we also only bought them certain times of the year. We just didn't arbitrarily buy them toys. And I think by doing that, they appreciate what they have. Yeah. If you get them too much stuff, they get bored and, you know, it's just not a good thing. So it's kind of nice to regulate yeah. that. So generally, it was reserved for specific gift-giving occasions. Mm -hmm. We gave them a toy maybe on their birthday and a toy at Christmas. But other than that, it was very unusual that we even at a garage sale, like, would, you know, just buy them something that they liked. Yep. And for one thing, they got allowance, and that allowance was really meant to pay for the things that they found at garage sales that they wanted. Mm -hmm. Second thing we don't pay for... We do not pay for cell phones. No, don't pay for the phone, don't pay for the service. The rule in this house is when you are old enough to get the phone, you are old enough to pay for the service on your own. All right, exception. Exception to rule is that we have been given some cell phones through the years, older models, and that are not hooked up to service. Oh, yes, yes. So what we did was we allowed the boys to get a phone number. It's a landline number, actually, that is available through a service called Text Now, and we'll put a link in the description of this video. So what Text Now allows you to do is have a, a number that is associated with that cell phone, and if that child was someplace where an internet connection was available, then they could call us using their cell phone, even though it wasn't hooked up to service, and they could call us and, and we could still communicate with them. Like if they went to the library or out with friends and we knew that there was some place where an, inter an internet connection was available, mm -hmm. then, then they could call us using that phone number. So it was sort of a little extra layer of protection. Um, that they sort of had a phone, but really they really didn't. It was yeah. never hooked up to service yeah. until they paid for it to be hooked up to service. Yeah, when they got old enough to work, make, earn their own money, then they bought their own cell phones, found their own service, and uh, we were good with that. That's right. Third thing we don't pay for? We do not pay for a car. We don't we don't buy them a car, but we do help them with their first we car. We do. We have what we call the mom and dad savings program. So when they start saving their own money, the first thousand dollars that they save and set aside toward a car, we match it. And then we match it one more time for the second thousand dollars. So mm -hmm. if they find their first car for four thousand dollars or less, then we just paid for half of it. Yeah. But we stop matching after two thousand dollars. If they want to buy a more expensive car, then whatever is left over after that is on them. And I really think that gives them more of an appreciation for owning a vehicle if they've had a part in investing some of their hard-earned money into it. And both of our older boys, um, let's see, I think our oldest son was about 20, maybe? 
when he bought his first car. He 19- bought his, he got his, we got his car before he got his driver's license. Yeah, it's true. We did. We did. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah so did. he would have been he like, did. he didn't get his license until he was about 19, I think. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, he got his car like two weeks before he actually went and took the driver's test. Mm-hmm. And um, so that, that car, and then our second son actually got a car. I think he was, he was not quite 18. Yeah, he was 17. Yeah. But the car goes in their name only, not in our name. And they are responsible for the gas, for the upkeep, and also for all of the um, insurance. And I want to say uh, our second son bought a nice car. He had saved up quite a bit of money. And, uh, it, it, and he's still driving it today. And he mm-hmm. bought it uh, about three years ago. So did good. He did real yeah. good. All right. Number four, we don't pay for... We don't pay for a college education. Now, we do give them $1,000 a year, which basically means we pay for books. Mm -hmm. Literally, that's all we give them. Now, our oldest son attended community college for three semesters and then was offered a full tuition scholarship to transfer to a private four-year Christian university. And he worked. He worked on campus. Mm -hmm. He worked full-time on any of his breaks. He worked full-time over the summer in order to pay his room and board at the college. So all of his expenses, other than that $1,000 a year that we gave him toward books, he paid for whatever was left over himself. And he graduated debt-free with money in the bank. And he had a car. So he was paying uh, the insurance, license, upkeep, gas on his car. And he paid cash. By the way, both boys paid cash for their cars. They did Mm -hmm. not take out a loan. Okay, we don't pay for... Expensive clothing. That goes for us, too. (laughs) Yeah, so we do. We pay for clothing. We make sure they're clothed. Aren't you glad? But, but, yeah, and for us, too. Uh, But uh, we don't buy name... If if they want name brand clothing, they're welcome to go to the local thrift store with us (laughs) to look for said expensive name brand clothing. Which is inexpensive, I suppose, by the time that gets to a thrift store. Mm-hmm. Um, but there, there, it, there may be very well name brand clothing in our home, but we did not pay anywhere near a full price for that clothing. Yeah. Uh, actually, you know what? The, the average cost of clothing for a family? I have no idea. Okay, it's $125 a month for a family of four. And so for us, that was a lot of money. The most we ever, even when all six of us were at home... Uh, the most we ever had in that clothing budget was $360 a year. A and year. that was at the high end. Yeah, yep. that was the most we ever paid. Yep. Uh, number six. Uh, we don't purchase car insurance. So we don't pay for the car. Kids. As you might imagine, we don't pay for the car insurance either. Nope. But even when they get their license and they are on our car insurance, whatever the difference is between the car insurance before and after they are put on that insurance, they pay the difference. And they have to be prepared to pay. We pay for our insurance yearly. Mm -hmm. So they have to be prepared to pay for their portion of the car insurance yearly. And they have to have that money saved up. And here's the advantage of that. When they move out, they're not going to have a big shock of expense. They're going to be used Mm -hmm. to running these expenses and uh, I think it prepares them better for when they uh, leave the nest. Our whole process of parenting was to slowly, over time, release to our sons over the years a little more and a little more and a little more responsibility for their own wants, needs, and desires. Mm-hmm. And so when you do that slowly, we have seen so many couples, oh my goodness, come to us and say, well, you know, I don't know, my son is, um, he's 22, I'm still paying his car insurance. Or... <laughs> Um, I'm still putting him through school and now I got to pay for grad school or, um, you know, uh, I have to provide them. They, my kids have told me I must provide them with a car. They need one. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So not, not the way that, that we flowed, but part of the problem was those kids were in shock. If Mm -hmm. their parents went back to them and said, I'm sorry, we're not going to provide you a car, the kids didn't know what to do. So part of of the way that you do this is you are really open and upfront with your kids early on. Our kids knew from the time they were in early grade school that we weren't paying for their car, that we weren't paying for insurance, that we weren't paying for their college education. So they prepared themselves. 
And that gave them good incentive to get a job, to work, and to save money. And to get good grades. So yes. <laughs> there you go. All right. The next thing we don't pay for. Well, we don't provide expensive birthday parties for the kids. We celebrate. We do. We, we give birthday parties. The average birthday cost is... I have no idea. Okay. The average child's birthday cost is... I'm going to guess $500. Yes, because it says it right there on the screen in front of us. That was my research. $500 good. for a child's birthday party. We loved, y'all, the whole process of figuring out the theme. Early in the year, they would figure out what their theme was going to be. And then we would start like stalking Pinterest and coming up with cake ideas and game ideas and decorating ideas. And part of the fun, honestly, was doing it all ourselves and doing it together. They had a blast. And we had all these games. We had lots of party games. And we had like door prizes that I got from Dollar Tree for a dollar a piece. And mm -hmm. um, we, the kids would come over for the birthday parties because they had such a good time at my kids' birthday parties. Because, you know, it wasn't at a pizza place. It wasn't I, all the all the food was no. homemade. I made scads of food for them. And and we had interesting cakes. So let me ask well, you a question. Cakes that I was like, use your imagination. It's an elephant or <laughs> it's a <laughs> robot. And they're like, mm hmm, Mrs. Ware, just, just cut it and give me a piece. But yes, yeah, so. I felt a little like, um, what's that show? There's a show on Netflix that people make cakes and and they, oh, somebody tell me in the comments, I can't come up with it. Because I've watched it so many times where you try to make it look like the professional cake and, and, it, and you can't. Somebody tell me, because I'm drawing a complete and utter blank right now and I can't come up with it. Nailed it. Oh, look, it's the teenager to the rescue. Nailed it. And so I felt a little at those birthday parties like nailed it. But I did my very dead level best to make it look like the Pinterest version. Okay, let me, let me ask you about what would you spend on their birthday parties. Do you remember? Yes, actually I do because I would, um, I would budget about $50 for the party. So about one tenth of the average birthday party. Okay. And usually we could do a cake and decorations and... Um, even specialty plates and napkins and stuff and um, decorations all for $50 or less. That was kind of like the game, too, to see what we could do for that amount of money. And, you know, they were nice parties, and the kids all had a lot of fun. All and right. they didn't get too wild. Uh, we don't pay for... Uh, well, we don't do any electronics, gaming consoles, that kind of thing. Like, like uh, I almost said Atari. <laughs> oh, yeah, you can tell we're old. Atari! Don't you all have one of those? <laughs> Okay. Well, like the Sony system, the Niten <gasps> Nintendo. Uh, in fact, Hot we, button topic. We didn't, uh, we didn't even allow the two older boys computer games uh, uh, on their computers. We, in fact, I provided older computers, and they had, they had PowerPoint and Microsoft Word and Excel. They learned how to use PowerPoint in such a way that... When they got to be older, they used it for everything. I was amazed at some of the things they, that they well, did. That's they got, the only thing we let them do on the computer. They got very creative. <laughs> we were like, the computer is a tool. It's not a toy. It's a tool, not a toy. <laughs> and so they're like, they learned all this stuff because that's the only way they could play on the computer was if I knew that they were working with one of those programs and learning it. But these were older computers that maybe I bought uh, secondhand and maybe paid fifteen dollars, yeah. twenty dollars. Old Apple computers. Something to get them, something to get them started. Of course. It, okay, so yeah. that's and that is seriously a pet peeve of ours. I mean, if you have gaming consoles, it's okay. You can say so in the comments, uh, and we won't like ditz you. Um, but we chose not to, and and I mean, I think that we weren't disappointed. We didn't. Yeah. We did not pay for. Uh, we did not pay for expensive vacations. We took vacations, but they were not expensive vacations. All right, y'all, the average vacation cost for a family of four is $4,500. Mm -hmm. We just figured that we could find plenty of really interesting things to do within a day's drive of our home that did not cost nearly $4,500. Uh, and the kids had a lot of fun. The only thing they ever said to us once, I don't know if you remember this, they said, We'd like to go somewhere, but please don't make it a museum. Uh, yeah, yeah. So because um, they got really tired. I would find out all the free days at museums, and they were like, we're really tired of educational exhibits. Can we just go somewhere like, 
you know, they wanted to go to like a carnival or something. Even if we just walked around without really buying anything, they didn't, they did not want it to be educational at all. So they only requested that once and we took them someplace that was a total blow off and they had a blast. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. And we do not pay for snack foods. All right. This is another one. We just look when your grocery budget is tight, snack foods just don't, they don't have a place in my budget. And I just don't find them really to be helpful because your kids can scarf those things down in about five minutes and they're hungry five minutes later. So we never bought them snack foods except like special, special occasions. And that's the thing. You don't mm -hmm. deprive your children of any of this. You find versions of it that you do approve or that you can afford and you make it a special occasion. So, I mean, like going out to restaurants, we only did a handful of times a year eating snack foods. I would occasionally buy something really awesome to take on our Friday night family picnics. And and they were super happy about it because they didn't get snack foods very often. So, But that one regular snack food, I guess you could call it a snack food, that we keep in the house is popcorn. We, we buy it in a 50-pound bag uh, from Sam's. And it's very inexpensive. It's less than $30 a bag. And that lasts a long time. That's a cheap snack food. Um, and uh, so, and then there's what, hot chocolate they had growing up. I mean, they, they, had, they had some some, yep. some fun stuff. Not a lot of Twinkies and stuff, though. So. It, it wasn't all vegetables. So. All right. Hey, if you want to know what else we don't spend money on, you're going to want to watch the next video. Check it out and just loop over to it next when you get done with this video. And we're going to tell you uh, 12 things that we don't spend money on. All right. We'll see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.